you don't have to have spent a lot of time in Revit before you begin to recognize the versatility of the section box. It's the tool or the feature that allows you to generate a cutaway view of your model, whether that be for a rendering like this, or maybe just as a way of verifying that you've got all your model components aligning properly. I quite often like to have several different section box views available in the browser so that I can go back and forth and just confirm that I've got all my assemblies and components lining up properly. And so what I want to do in this video is show you how you can take the basic versatility of the section box and extend it a little bit. Uh, it's an easy thing to generate, of course, as we can kind of see from these side-by-side -side views of the same model here. Over on the right, I would just look in the properties window for the option for section box and just check it. And then I'll see this box surrounding my model. And the way this works, of course, is that I just use the grips to pull in towards my model and then anything left outside of that section box will be uh, hidden so that I get this kind of cutaway view. So that's the basic way that the section box works. And what I want to do in this video is I want to talk about how we can extend the cutaway capabilities of Revit and generate something that looks like this, which is the exact opposite condition. So as I said over here on the right, uh, when we use the section box, typically um, we're just limiting the visibility to anything that falls within the volume of the section box. And over here on the left, you can see that this is exactly the opposite condition where I've generated a little cutaway box and it's only the elements that are outside of that that are visible. So we want to work towards that type of a final look here. And I'm going to show you how to set that up. So the process begins in a main floor view. And you can see that in that view, I've got two building sections, one running from left to right or from west to east looking north. And then I've got building section two running from north to south looking east. I'm going to make building section one active. I can do that either by clicking on the arrowhead of the uh, section symbol here, or I can just double click on the browser again, making that the active view. I want to keep these two open for a minute uh, before I open up section number two. And I want to just make main floor current, as you can see here, and then rely on the uh, view tab tool here, tile views to make it so that I can see the main floor at the same time that I select sections one and two. So I'll just click on tile views. Again, you can see Main floor stays visible over here on the left. And then I've got section one. And now that I've got that selected and current, I'm gonna double click on section two. So I've set up a condition here where I can change the uh, orientation of my crop region, which is this framing element around my main floor. Uh, I'm gonna be rotating it. I'm gonna be relying on the rotations being carried out in section one and section two. So that's why I wanted to set up this tile windows condition. Before I do that, though, I want to add an important feature uh, to my main floor view. And uh, this is going to be found on the view tab under the plan views tool. I want to expand that and drop down here to plan region. Now, just let me explain exactly what this is about before I actually activate the tool. This is a floor plan view. And that being the case, it's essentially a horizontal section. We don't call it that, but that's what it is. And that being the case, of course, Revit gives me a set of options which can be found under view range. I just typed in the keyboards uh, shortcut VR. And the view range of course is what determines exactly where in the vertical sort of extension of this model uh, Revit performs the cut. So you can see here that the cut plane is set at 1200 millimeters above the main floor. And that's why it's cutting where it is through these windows and around some of these other elements. So every floor plan view has a view range setting. And what we do when we add a plan region is we create a special condition within that floor plan where a different set of view range properties will apply. So I'm just going to activate the tool and you can see it puts me in sketch mode. I'll click on the rectangle here and I'm just going to create a little plan region that runs kind of through the lower left hand corner of my building. And I'll just kind of nudge this down a little bit and generate something that looks about like that. Okay, so when I click on the green check, you'll see just these kind of green dotted outlines indicating again that this is a special set of circumstances for the view range. So other view range properties won't apply in this area. Now, before I actually start doing the rotation of the crop region, as I mentioned, I want to just type in VR. And what I want to do here is I want to set up the view range for all other parts of this main floor view. And what I want to do here is just set up a top and a cut plane value that are going to be well above the model. So essentially, I'm just kind of nullifying the effect of the typical uh, view range settings. So as I said, I'll just set up some numbers here that I know go well above. And I'm also going to do the same thing for the bottom parts. So I'm going to set a view depth to a number that I know is well below. And then I'll do the same thing here with the bottom setting. 
Okay, so now that I've done that, I'll click apply and you'll see that uh, I kind of see the impact of that already. So I see something that looks a little bit more like a site plan now, and I can also see where I've got a special set of circumstances that are being applied within the regions of this plan region. Now that I've got that all set up, I'm going to select the crop region for my main floor view, which of course is this outside frame. And I want to confirm that I've got it selected all throughout the process here uh, over the course of the next few steps that I'm about to take. Uh, I can do that by just glancing at this little icon down here in the lower right. It shows a number one. And of course, I can also see up here in the properties window that it's letting me know that I've got the floor plan selected. It doesn't say crop region, but that's what it has selected. So now that I've got the confirmation that it's selected, I can go to section one. And I want to rotate the crop region in this section one view. So keep section one active. Make sure you've got the crop region selected. And then just click on the rotate tool. And we want to enter numerically 28.5. So don't make any attempt to actually rotate it in the section view. We don't want to be clicking on any part of that view. We just hit 28.5. And now you can begin to see what happens to our floor plan view. It's not looking so two-dimensional anymore. Uh, the next step would be to go to section two. Again, just confirming that you've still got that crop region selected. And I'll click on the rotate tool again, and I'm going to enter negative 32.5. And you'll see another rotate being applied. And now we can begin to see the impact here of rotating the crop region of the main floor view and having the, the plan region active in that view. One final rotate. We'll just make sure that we have that crop region selected. And then we'll click on rotate. And we're going to enter negative 36.8. Now, I'm just going to uh, close section one and section two. And we'll have a closer look at what we've got. All right. So, as I said, I changed the view range for the main part, uh, the majority of the main floor view, uh, by just making sure that all the properties were set well above and well and below. And so what that leaves me with now is a condition where the rest of the model is intact and it's just these portions that fall within the boundaries of the plan region that get adjusted. So now that I can still see it, I can select it and I can click on view range. And I can play around with the numbers here so that I get a different look. And what I'm going to do is actually kind of like I did with the main uh, view range settings is I'm going to set the top up to a number that I know is well above the model. I'm going to do the same thing here with the bottom. I'm going to set that to a lower value that's well below the bottom. And then I'm going to play around with the cut plane. And that's really the important part of this. And that's where you'll do sort of most of your experimentation. If I click apply, uh, nothing initially will look like it's changed. And again, it's just here in the numeric entry here for the cut plane that I can see the impact of this a little bit more poignantly. I'm going to set that down to something below grade and just click apply. And now you can see that I've got a cut here that extends down into the basement. Uh, it's telling me here that I've lost the range here on my color scheme, unfortunately, but I'm just going to click OK. Actually, sorry, no, I'm just going to change uh, to move to room, and I think that should do it. There we go, good. It asked me to do that a couple times. And uh, I guess that's an opportunity here to kind of point out something else that I did. So to kind of summarize what's happening here, of course, uh, I've got a main floor view. And because it's a main floor view, it's taking advantage of all the typical sort of things that we associate with a two-dimensional main floor view. So the plan region being sort of prime among them. But in addition to that, as you can kind of see as I peek through the openings here, I've also added a color scheme to the floors here within the building. So it's just another example of how I can kind of leverage some of the properties that are usually just available to a flat two-dimensional main floor in a 3D view. And uh, one final step that I'll make here is I'll just maybe add some shadows that kind of ca get cast down in the basement so we can kind of see, again, just a little bit more of the impact uh, of these set of steps. So I'll click on my graphic display options over here on the left in my properties window. I'll make sure that both my shadows are on, ambient and cast. And then in the lighting, I'm just going to click on my sun setting. And I'm going to change the ground plane for these shadows down to P1, which is my lower level. I'll click apply. And again, just a, another little enhancement here so that you can see down into the lower parts of the building. And maybe just to make it look a little bit more interesting is that uh, as it was shown there in the thumbnail image, I'm just going to click on the roof and I'll right click that and override the graphics in the view by element so that we can see a little bit of transparency here, kind of show off some of those nice trusses in the roof and just enhance the look. So there it is again. 
The impact of this is that I'm not stuck with just the traditional application of the section box, but I can do something that's a little bit more interesting, kind of flip things around and see elements that lie outside of that little cropping object. So I hope that's useful. I look forward to uh, hearing some comments about this and seeing how you apply this to generate some more fascinating looking rabbit graphics. If you like what you heard, I'd appreciate uh, hitting the subscribe button and stay tuned for more videos.